Zhang tells me proudly that the institute is about to celebrate its 100,000th enrollment. In China, Dali Watkins, mother of four, grandmother of six and great-grandmother of one, is, he adds, a hot commodity. The next morning, in a suite on the 56th floor of the Park Hyatt, Dali Watkins is wrapped in a plush white hotel robe. It's only 8 a.m., but her hair is already styled. A film crew is on its way up to capture her routine for a marketing video. A vast collection of makeup is meticulously arranged on the bathroom counter, with an equally extensive collection of jewelry laid out neatly on a white bath towel. I thought I shall let him film me at the start of putting my stockings on and say, stop right there, she says as she sweeps through the suite which boasts a 180 degree view of the city below. I shall then put on my clothes before allowing the cameraman back in to film me putting my makeup on, within two hours, the filming is done and we take a lift to the 66th floor, where 45 elegantly attired women have been briefed for more than an hour by Jung on, the etiquette of meeting Miss Daly. Aged from their 20s to 50s, the students have each paid 29,800 yuan, about $6,200, for the four-day look of success course. It's a substantial sum in Guangzhou, where the average monthly salary for a white-collar worker is about 8,000 yuan, $1,650. Dally Watkins' first lesson of the day is titled Particular Attitude of Reverence to Mother, and begins with her talking to a photo of her dead mother, Kay, as the students stand in a semicircle around her. In China, it's customary for people to talk to portraits of their dead ancestors to seek protection, good health and fortune. The angelic image is hung high on the wall, so when the students look at the picture of Kay, it's as if they're paying homage to a deity. Dally Watkins glides almost ceremonially across the room, her shoulders back, chin tilted upwards, her dark brown hair elegantly set and green eyes fixed on her beloved mother. I owe my life really to my mother, who was there for me, devoted her entire life to me, Dally Watkins begins. Sitting beside her, Zhang dutifully translates, My mother was unhappy because there she was this beautiful young lady out there on the sheep farm forever working, doing the cooking, washing and helping out with all the farm chores, helping set the rabbit traps and then going around early the next morning to collect them. She would skin hundreds of them and hang them out to dry. She chopped the wood, stacked the stove, lit the fire, collected water from the tank and carted them back to the house and boiled the water to make porridge, all before anyone else had risen. Unknown to the class, Dally Watkins is afflicted with sinusitis, which makes her nose run involuntarily. As such, she has the habit of delicately dabbing her nose periodically with a tissue, a gesture which enhances the sense of melancholy around her story. The mood is somber and respectful as she offers thanks to her mother for giving her life. Some of the students are moved to tears. A faded black and white photograph of a farmhouse appears on a screen behind Dally Watkins. It's her grandparents' home at Watson's Creek, near Tamworth in northern NSW, where she grew up. Zhang leads Dali Institute tours of the farm at Chinese New Year, though my grandparents were loving and caring towards me, they behaved differently towards my mother because she had brought shame to the family by having me, an illegitimate child, she tells the students. Picture scroll across the screen of Dali Watkins in the 1950s, when she was one of Australia's most famous models. She continues with a potted history of her life story. How her mother was her first booking agent, traveling with her to Sydney to Farmer's Department Store, a former rival to David Jones, to ask if her daughter could be a model, which is how her career began. My mother was a nobody but was determined her daughter would be a somebody, she says, making Kay sound very much like one of China's famed tiger mums. It was before mobile phones, so it meant she had to be home night and day, next to the phone, so she did not miss a single booking. 
when she was not the cook, housekeeper, driver, secretary or bookkeeper. She was busy behind the sewing machine, making clothes for me, she was always telling me what to do and what not to do. She was strict with me because she loved me. If I was not sitting properly or I was not standing up straight or speaking correctly, my mother would hit me on my arm and say, Junie, if you speak Australian, no one is going to accept you. When Dally Watkins was a teenager, her mother met and married Major David Dally Watkins, who adopted her and gave her his name. After the morning's class, there's a break for lunch. John takes the afternoon's lessons, which include dress code and international studies and British afternoon tea. She valris around Dally Watkins when he's not translating, he graciously rushes to open doors, instinctively pulls out her chair, tends to her every request. I shall devote my whole life to preaching Miss Dally's philosophies, he tells me. But he's also firm about what he wants. By day's end, he says he's pleased with the way the day has gone and would like Dally Watkins to start the next day with a repeat of the morning prayer ritual, this time with more feeling. She's not impressed with the request. James doesn't realize how stressful it is for me, she tells me later. It's so heartrending to be incessantly reminded of my mother's pain. June Dally Watkins has an impressive history to impart. In 1949, the then 22-year-old was crowned Australian Model of the Year. A year later she established her deportment in etiquette school, modeling by day the designs of Christian Dior and Pierre Balmain while teaching students at night how to be confident, capable and charming in both social and business situations. Her mother kept the books, manned the phones and greeted everyone. At the time it was rare for a woman, let alone two, to be running a business. In 1951, Dally Watkins added a modeling school, which was established enough a year later for her to spend six months in the US and Europe, where she modeled and hung out with fashion designers and movie stars. She met Spencer Tracy, Cary Grant and Bing Crosby, and even visited Gregory Peck on the movie set of Roman Holiday. A brief romance with Peck fizzled as quickly as it started, with Dally Watkins returning to her business. The following year, she fell in love with naval officer John Clifford, with whom she had four children, Carl, Timothy, Mark and Lisa. The couple separated in 1968 at a time when marriages weren't supposed to fall apart. June Dally Watkins was children Carl, Timothy, Mark and Lisa in 1967, credit. Archively Watkins raised the children as a single parent while continuing to run her business, which by then had become a household name across Australia. Not everyone approved, anonymous callers would phone to tell her she was a bad mother and to go home to her children, who would otherwise turn out delinquents from her neglect. They didn't, and Dally Watkins was later recognized as one of Australia's trailblazing female entrepreneurs, receiving an Order of Australia for her contribution to business. It's the morning of day two when Dally Watkins is beside herself with excitement. From under the hairdryer, where she's being groomed by two stylists, she tells me her assistant has called to say an Australian film producer is interested in making a movie about her life. Isn't that the best news? Look at my hands. I can't stop shaking, she says. I just hope I am alive to see it. We travel again to the 66th floor, where Zhang has been leading the students in a mind liberation journey, in which they cast away their old selves to be ready to absorb all of Dally Watkins' spiritual energy. When Zhang emerges from the room, Dally Watkins seizes the opportunity to enthusiastically tell him that a movie may be made of her life. Zhang pleads with her not to share her good news in this session, but to announce it instead during the lunch break. With the students still in their self-transcendence stage, Dally Watkins and I are led by Zhang into the middle of the circle. As they open their eyes and spot their tutor, a symphony of wailing begins. A student called Kelly sobs so hysterically she's on the verge of falling over. 
I comfort her with a hug, which she heartily accepts before realizing that I'm not Dally Watkins. I shuffle us closer to Dally Watkins and gently resettle the hug onto her. This starts a stampede of students keenly lining up for hugs. Zhang swiftly sends them back to their places. Dally Watkins is soon standing again under her mother's portrait. Tomorrow is my mother's birthday and she loves me so much that this morning she sent me a very special gift that I very much wish to share with all of you. Zhang's startled eyes nearly pop out of their sockets as Dally Watkins shares her good news about the potential movie. I truly believe my mother has a hand in this, for which I am truly grateful. Amen, from the baffled looks of the students, I wonder how many of them understand the import of what they've just been told. Later, I seek out Kelly, who tells me that this morning she'd shed her outer shell, acknowledging for the first time the death four years ago of her son in a car accident, while he was home on a semester break from his university studies in Canada. Stally's great spirit has torn down my fortress of sadness and for the first time, I feel liberated and my heart is no longer heavy with pain, she says. Next class begins with Dally Watkins asking about the meaning of the word beautiful. Everyone has an idea of what is a beautiful person. They think models are beautiful or their makeup is beautiful. They don't look at beauty beyond that as something they can see. But to me, I think beauty is much more than skin deep. True beauty lies within us. True beauty comes from the way you carry your body, the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you sit. It reflects the way you present yourself. The students furiously make notes, the loveliest gift we have is our smile. Dally Watkins continues. When we smile, it lights up our faces and makes our eyes sparkle and our appearance is warmer and friendlier. A smile changes the tone of our voice. When I am smiling, people appreciate me much more. When you smile it brings on a new you, a new human being, both for men and women. In 2018, bringing her signature style to Chinese women. Credit. You, you to me, beauty is all of that, I just mentioned, but one of the most beautiful ways to be is to be kind to other human beings. Be aware of other people's feelings, be considerate and thoughtful. Always remember to say please and thank you, that adds another sense of beauty. Be aware of the sound and tone of your voice and always aware of your good manners. This is the depth of beauty that you can't wash off at night the way you wash off your makeup. Lunch in a mini ballroom follows, where Dally Watkins teaches the proper way to behave at tables set with silverware, white tablecloths and linen napkins. She summons the waiters to serve the first course, advising on how one places one's cutlery when not quite finished one's meal, and asking Where does one place one's napkin when one leaves to go to the washroom? Later, she talks about one of her pet hates, smartphones. She takes pride in never having owned one, their mere mention brings a frown to her face. Your body is the house you live in and your brain is your control tower. There were no mobile phones when I grew up, I just used my brain for thinking, planning, dreaming and imagining. People are not doing that now. We are losing our brains. Your brain remembers everything and thinks for you. It tells you what to do, how to do it and how to take care of you, not your mobile phone, as they are dangerous to your mind, everyone now lives for their mobile phone and it is taking over their lives. I go out to a restaurant and everyone at the table is on their mobile phones. They will cross the street when the red light is on. They walk on the street glued to the screen and bump into people. Everyone on the bus and everyone on the train is on their mobile, ignoring everyone else. They are not using their brain. We now don't care about other people as other people do not exist. The only thing that exists in our lives is the pressing of buttons. We are losing the care, thought, consideration, kindness and good manners to mobile phones. June Daly Watkins in 1970, credit. 
archiving looks uncomfortable, mobiles are, after all, a big part of modern China. On Dally Watkins' request, he later dials her daughter Lisa on his own smartphone, then passes it to her for a lengthy conversation. It's the final day, and I have a few hours to chat to some of the students before the graduation ceremony begins. I could be line for a woman in her 50s, who's been obsessively filming Dally Watkins walking, at one point squatting with her smartphone inches from Dally Watkins' feet. If Dally Watkins is bothered she doesn't show it, informing me that the lady, Yu Zhang, is an 8th time student, having attended her first course 4 years ago. She's not the only multiple attendee. I asked Dally Watkins if, in her 70 years of teaching, she's had as many repeat students as in China, almost never, except one time when a student came to me as a child and returned 10 years later as an adult, Yu Zhang is pleased when I inquire about her fascination with Dally Watkins' feet. Miss Dally is most particular about correct posture and correct footing, she says. She taught us to walk flat-footed, never on our heels or toes, always advancing forward flat on our feet. Yesterday, I filmed her walking and I went home and studied the footage intensely, I noticed her steps are that of a flat-footed two-year-old toddler. I suddenly realized that no one can walk like that. I consider Miss Dally must be a street, for only an angel of God has the footstep of an unblemished child, a beautician. Yu Zhang runs her own salons and beauty schools in the province of Hebei, which lies north of Beijing, and is also involved in hospitality with her husband. She'd endured insufferable neck pain for years, this disappeared after the courses, with their focus on posture. I continue to come in order to absorb more and more of Miss Dally's spirit. Eventually, I wish to write a book about Miss Dally's influence on me and hopefully one day to teach like Miss Dally, would this be her last course? She laughs. Definitely not, I have yet to fully master Miss Dally's signature stance. Before the graduation ceremony, there's a farewell buffet lunch, at which the students are dressed in their finest regalia. It has donned a tiara, which looks to be made with real diamonds. Another is in a huge formal gown, master, fully negotiating the tight corners of the buffet holding a plate in one hand and her three-meter train with the other. The wine comes in bottles with labels flaunting beautiful 1950s black and white portraits of Dally Watkins. Zhang proudly informs the guests that the wines are sourced from wild grapes growing on a remote steep slope of Greece and made in cooperation with the Greek government. It's very rare, he says, before an enthused Dally Watkins butts in, it's so good, you couldn't stop at one glass, quick pour me another, ha ha ha. Here's, everyone, a lady by the name of Phoenix seeks me out. She's watched me interviewing others earlier and wants to share her story. I had an impoverished background and was brought up by a single father, she says. My mother left me when I was four. I grew up mistrusting all women. At 22, she married a rich elderly gentleman in his 70s and was thrust into high society. Young and lacking in confidence, she enrolled in Dally Watkins' course for guidance. On the first day, she wore a pair of ripped jeans and a casual top while I was on stage with the other students for a style class. Miss Dally singled me out for a dressing down of my attire. I was highly embarrassed in this further affirmed to me that no women will ever like me. As I stepped down from the stage, Miss Dally came up to me unexpectedly and gave me a hug. I instantly felt a surge of love exuding from her, this embrace was the first I had ever received in my entire life from another female. I felt this woman truly care for me. The unlovable shell of me broke. I felt the spirit of Miss Dally that day and I have been addicted to that feeling ever since, I ask how many times she has enrolled in this course. After five times, I stopped counting, she says, laughing. Previously, I thought I was an ordinary girl, but Miss Dally showed me I am an extraordinary person. I am now confident and as the French would say, having savoir faire, is she finished here?
As long as Miss Daly continues to teach and her school still exists, I shall keep coming. For Miss Daly's love and spirit, Kelly, the mother whose son died in a car accident four years ago, has created a foundation in her son's honor at the Canadian university he attended. She's turned down every invitation from the university to present the scholarship to the recipients, but now she's looking forward to attending the next presentation with her husband and family. Daly Watkins enters a Daly Institute luncheon in Guangzhou with business partner James Zhang. Credit Yu Yi as more Chinese travel overseas for work and pleasure, demand is growing for Western etiquette classes, considered essential to solidifying social status in China as well as for navigating the confusing social mores of foreign lands. The year the Daly Institute opened its doors in Guangzhou was the year that Chinese minding their P's and Q's abroad became a talking point at the very top of China's Communist Party. One of the country's four vice premiers, Wang Yang, chastised some of his fellow citizens for their uncivilized behavior and dire manners when traveling overseas after a series of reports of Chinese tourists behaving badly appeared in international media. Zhang is confident demand for Western etiquette courses will continue to accelerate, so much so that he expects the Delhi Institute to mark its 1 millionth enrollment by 2022. Daly Watkins almost certainly won't be teaching by then. At 91, she's already defying the odds in continuing to work when most people her age are well and truly retired, in a nursing home, or pushing up daisies. Daly Watkins has had a few health scares but is stoic, she checked herself out of hospital early to fly to China, to teach the course I've come to observe, even. If I don't feel 100%, I pretend I am, she tells me, pointing out that she's only missed one engagement since she began teaching in China. In 2014, she kept an engagement to speak in Shanghai before 3,000 guests, after earlier breaking her arm in several places in Hong Kong. She postponed the operation on her arm until after the speaking event. So what caused that one absence? I turned down an engagement to be a Miss World China judge when my daughter Lisa was visiting me in Sydney from Florence, she says. She is more important. After lunch, we adjourned to one of the Park Hyatt's large conference rooms for the parade where the students, three at a time, strut and twirl in a pageant-style manner. Renee, a stylist who has worked for Daly Watkins for more than 20 years, has flown in from Brisbane to critique the graduates' parade and poses. Next come performances that groups of the students have been preparing over the course. One group sings a song about Daly Watkins, another reads a poem in tribute to her, which they take turns to articulate with dramatic gestures and expressions. A third group performs a dance routine. Zhang is quivering with pride, while my hands are sore from the endless clapping. The graduation ceremony is next, with each student walking the full perimeter of the room before receiving their certificate and being professionally photographed. Daly Watkins' smile remains picture perfect throughout. At dinner later that night, Daly Watkins barely touches her meal, and excuses herself early to retire to her room. She has another class in four days' time that has double the intake of this one. The next day, I ask her how she does it, I am a great pretender, she says, and adds. With a wink, you see, there is simply no one else to take my place. To read more from Good Weekend magazine, visit our page at the Sydney Morning Herald, The Age and Brisbane Times.